Hello and welcome to another edition of the Father and Son Pastime Podcast. I'm Patrick. I'm Kevin. That's my dad. How are you? We are nearing the end, Dad, of our Dream Team Fantasy Series on all the 30 MLB franchises. Today's feature is the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, we got a Cubs fan right here. Might see a little bias. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, but if you're just joining us, what we do here is obviously we choose the best player at each position, including starter, reliever, closer, and for the fun of it, we talk about the be best manager to manage this dream team. A couple of qualifications. You have to have at least three years of team service time, so three years for the Brewers in this situation, mm -hmm. uh, as well as be known for playing that position. You can't just put Paul Molitor in center field because you want to. Uh, you have to be known for playing that position. Mm -hmm. Cool. We start with catcher, and we kind of ping pong our choices back and forth. We might hear some debates, we might hear some controversies. It's always fun, so please chime in in the comments below if you uh, like our picks or disagree with them entirely. Dad, would you like to go first with catcher? Love to. Let's do it. <laughs> I had Ted Simmons. Okay. Okay. And again, um, very good catcher defensively, great leader, and all that stuff. He was their Brewers catcher for numerous years. I'm thinking seven to ten years. Steady influence. Handled the pitching staff well. Again, a uh, great uh, catcher in the Brewers uh, system. And I didn't you know, see that many other candidates. The Ted Sim was a pretty easy choice for me. My dad and I have seen this a lot because of our uh, differing of age. We're not brothers. Um, that we've seen our own bias be influenced in a lot of these decisions. If we've seen the player, especially me, obviously, I didn't see Simmons play. Right. Um, if we've seen the player play, we might have a little bit more affinity to pick them. So I'm choosing Jonathan Lucroy. Um, shout out to Jonathan Lucroy's wife, who smashes hand um, during, an, I think, an All-Star game. Yes. Remember in a suitcase, and then I think it really helped the Cubs one series because they didn't have to place Lucroy, and that was his like, All-Star year. Um, <laughs> but shout out to Jonathan Lucroy's wife because it's the funniest story I think yeah, I've heard. Yeah, being a Cub. For a little bit, right? Yeah, for a little bit last yeah. season, yeah. But I thought he was a great backup. I'm sorry, yeah, just a, a great backstop, not a backup. Um, backstop to the Brewers. He caught a lot of great pitchers. I know Giovanni Gallardo seems to be like a fan fav fan favorite, and Giovanni had a lot of great things to say about Luke Croy um, in yeah. his time in Milwaukee. Yeah, he was good, and he was there for a number of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then he either was... choice. Yeah, I agree. No real debate. We won't get into it over the catcher here. Yeah, that's right. Um, first base. Now I think this is where you can have a little debate here, but I'm choosing Prince Fielder, just because of the bombs that Fielder would hit, the amount of home runs, not defense calling you out prince your defense is not that great but hey you put on some great home run derbies i really enjoyed that and i'm sorry that your career was cut short so much uh when once you came to texas with your neck i had prince as well mm -hmm. uh, i had one a being uh, cecil cooper yep and he was a really a, a long-term first baseman that was very good defensively again another pull hitter hit a lot of home runs but when you look at just statistically what you know, those two came. Prince was pretty darn good uh, during his younger years. Mm -hmm. And then um, was it a neck surgery that did him in? I think he, yeah, I think he might have fractured his neck and then had okay. to do neck surgery or something, something like that. But it was when he was with Texas. Correct. And he just said, I'm retired. I can't yeah, come back from it. I think it was like 30 agent, you know. or 31. Yeah. yeah. Texas had made some mistakes with free agents. Yeah, they have. Yeah. But I mean, when he was with Milwaukee, he was pretty darn good. And, you know, for being a heavy fella, I mean, he he was athletic. Mm -hmm. You have to admit that he was really, really good. So uh, Prince, uh, again, was the leader of that team when they were really good during that era. Who do you have for second? Paul Molitor. Hall of Famer Paul Molitor. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Now, you could really put him on second and third. Spoiler, I'm going to put him at third. So I'm curious. You're, I'm sure you're curious who I put at second. So why Molitor at second versus Gantner, for example, or, or something like that? I thought Molitor played many more games at second base than he did any other position, uh, at least with the Brewers. And then, uh, again, he was keystone combo with Robin Yount, and again, they were dynamite up the middle. So I think, again, with like the Tigers, you had those two kind of connected just because they knew each other really, really well. And they came up, I mean, you know, we were talking before, Robin came up as a 19-year-old kid from mm -hmm. California, and then Molitor was shortly thereafter. They were the heart and soul of those teams. Yeah. Well, so, you could... Uh, a lot of the Brewers players sort of played multiple positions. Correct. Robin Rattan, you could put center field. He yeah. played a lot of games at center field. Yeah, so yeah. I think uh, Molitor is an easy choice at second or third, just sort of yeah. who you, who do you choose in a different location. Yeah. I mentioned Gantner. I was I almost chose Gantner, but I just thought he was he had no power. Like abysmal. Like he had years where he hit no home runs. Right. I didn't know that was possible being a starter that you can't squeak one over the fence or run around and get some inside the parker. Uh, but I went with Ricky Weeks just for a little bit more power. Okay. I thought defensively he was okay enough to put there. Um, 
I do think Gantner probably would have the edge on him defensively. Yeah. Uh, but I just, you know, I was looking at the rest of my lineup. I really just kind of wanted a little bit more pop in this lineup. Obviously, we have Fielder. Obviously, we're going to have Riyant and Molitor with some hits as well. Um, but I just want a little bit more power in that lineup. Yeah. And go ahead. You're going to go shortstop. Or, or... Oh, Robin, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I think that's You know what? If you, a lot of people kind of, you know, during that era, Ken Griffey was really a great player, but Robin Yount had kind of like similar statistics mm-hmm. during that era and played, you know, shortstop and all that. And again, a lot of people, I mean, the MVPs and all that stuff, Robin was always in the conversation. So he had a really great career there. So again, um, I think, you know, he's a star of that team during that time. Yeah. He had some help, but he was the one that people always looked out for the most. We're going to get to this feature of the Father and Son Pastime Podcast eventually, but in terms of thinking of one player that represents an entire franchise, I think yeah. Robin Yount yeah. represents 50 years of Brewers history yeah, I agree. really well. Yeah. So obviously I had Molitor at third. Who'd you pick at third? I had Jim Gatner. Okay, so again, just uh, yep. picking where they go. Yeah, and again, when I went through you know the, the best 100 players that the Brewers ever had, they had Jim as a third baseman. And again, you're right on with, you know, not a whole lot of home runs, but as far as a steady on-base performer, Mm -hmm. getting on, scoring runs and all that, defensively was great versatility. Uh, Jim had a lot of great memories, and the fans loved him. He definitely seems to be a fan favorite for sure. Again, not growing up, (coughs) excuse me, not growing up in that generation, um, I think is a reason I probably chose Ricky Weeks, same reason I chose Luke Roy. Uh, Moving on to the outfield now. Uh, I chose the Hebrew hammer in left field. I had <laughs> Ryan Braun. You know what? I had him as 1A. You didn't I choose had, him as your left fielder. I had Yelich. Yelich is not... Well, I guess you're kind of right because Braun obviously has switched to that kind of DH role this year. Correct. Yelich seems to have a lot of games at left and center with the Brewers, so we're kind of curious to have them. I'll have Yelich in the center. Okay. Because he came to Milwaukee to play center. Right. Um, he played a lot of games there in 2019, and obviously in 2020 we've seen him shift more to left, where he was familiar playing in Miami. Yeah, okay. I mean, think about his years in Milwaukee, though. Yeah. I mean, talking about, you know, a great player and, you know, really taking over to get Milwaukee yeah. into the playoffs last year. He was, you know, in that September you know, month, I mean, just the September time period, he just carried the team. Yeah. So I thought that was impressive and um, f- f- fabulous out- outfielder and athlete. So mm-hmm. yeah, I misspoke. Yelich came here as a came to Milwaukee as a right fielder, not as a center fielder. So I'll have him in right field. Okay, small little mistake there, but yeah, around the horn, right? Yeah. Um, now, why'd you choose Ryan Braun? Well, MVP. I okay. have a big thing that it's hard to ignore MVPs that get for the team. I again, my generation, I thought Ryan Braun at some points could have or maybe even should have signed elsewhere for larger money, and I think he really loves playing in Milwaukee. So he loves Milwaukee, so I wanted to, to really share, hey, Milwaukee loves you too. You should mm-hmm. be part of this dream team. Okay. You know, he started as an infielder. I know. Yeah. We'll look at uh, Gary Sheffield started as a shortstop yeah. at one point. So Yeah. So, yeah, so it's amazing. M- so Mookie out- Betts. Like- well, you know, name the, the best outfielder, I mean, the best athlete of all the people we talked about. Biggio has to be yeah. up there. because Catcher. Of the- Second center. Yeah, I mean, if you really think about hard it, positions. Yeah, and then Robin Yount shorts up the center field and all that. Yeah. Just Betts. think how great of, uh, an athlete those yeah. people are to change yeah. positions. Cody Bellinger too. Yeah, first mid- to center. Yeah, midway in their career and and do it well. Yeah. So I think it's fantastic. But yeah, yeah. that's good stuff. So who'd you have for center? Let's uh, Kane, Lorenzo oh, Kane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know why? It's defense. Speed. Yeah, defense. Yeah. yeah you, just, need, you need a leadoff hitter, I guess. He's made some catches that are like, what? Where did he come from? <laughs> yes. And I think yes. when I look at the lineup, you know, where would the the Brewers be during the last couple of years without Kane? Yeah. So that's the reason why I got, I got you know for that. I went with more power here with Gorman Thomas. Um, Ooh. Yeah. Gorman was center fielder. Mm-hmm. He was a big man, by the way. I know. But yeah, he was hitting the like forty eight home runs as a center fielder. You don't see yeah. that that often. Yeah, that's like a DH. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, yeah. Like well, I, like I, well, again, Milwaukee is. A, I guess how long were they an American League team? Because I know you said they were. Oh yeah, they were American League team. I remember going to Memorial Stadium, seeing them in the playoffs. Enough and, then. Yeah, so enough. that was probably eighties. Okay. So up until probably the mid eighties or so, they were American League uh, team and battling uh, the Orioles for playoff spots along the way. And I remember they had nicknames as, you know, the Bashers and, and all those type of things just because they were had yeah. great home runs and all that stuff. But, again, when they put in the National League, they got, you know, the, away from the DH. But Gorman Thomas, back in the day, 
was him and Rob Deere were the home run hitters mm-hmm. and just big, big men. But that's great. Normally, obviously, if it, the team is a National League team, even though with 2020 and the Universal DH, we don't really talk about, you know, if there, we needed a DH position or anything like that, we just kind of go from right field right to pitching. My DH, I think, would obviously be Cecil Cooper here um, if I had to, to pick one. So, yeah. again, just kind of due to that yeah. use in Astros of it all flip, flip-flopping between the National yeah. League, American League, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'd probably go with Cooper. So I have Braun, Thomas, and then I would go with Christian Yelich in my right field position. Okay. And then your right field is? Rob Deere. Okay. So power again. Big man, hit yeah. a lot of home runs. True power hitter in his day. But one of the great names out of the Brewers organization, Sixto Lascano, mm-hmm. was a great right fielder. And there's another Sixto, right? A pitcher Correct. for the Marlins. Correct. Yeah. Sixto Sanchez. Yeah. So the uh, it, it was funny. The uh, the commentators were saying, anytime you have a first name of Sixto, you know you got to be a baseball that's player. That's true. That's true. So, yeah. yeah. And Sixto was a or great. Or like a matador or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's one of the two. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, again, he was really good. I mean, Rod Deere was a power guy. Sixto was the one defense, doubles, got on base a lot, and one of those quiet leaders of the team. But, yeah. Kind of interesting how, again, that perspective – that age bias is really playing a part here. Where like who we're choosing, like obviously Luke Croy and Weeks, um, Ryan Braun, and then you're choosing some older players mm-hmm. like Rob Deere, um, Ted Simmons, and Jim Gander. So kind of yeah. sound off in the comments below, which makes more sense the a newer version yeah. of this team with some more familiar names to maybe my generation or some of the the classic older yeah. players that really developed the Brewers organization. Yeah, and then you know I was a fan of the Brewers way back when they had a Baltimore connection. So they used to draft a great deal of players out of the Baltimore area. And then uh, you'll see when I have the, the manager of the year, um, you know, he had Baltimore roots. So, again, they had scouts um, from Johnny's, which is a big amateur uh, team back in the 60s and 70s out of Baltimore. But the Brewers really drafted well out of this area and had a real Baltimore connection. And they had great games, uh, you know, between the Brewers and the Orioles. Always first, second place in the standings. So it was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, so we talked about DH. I chose Cooper. You chose Gordon Thomas. Yeah. Talk about pitching. I got CC. How long did CC play for them? He played for them for about five to seven years. Okay. He made his yeah. name with the Brewers. Yeah, I remember he had a, a great back half of one season too. Yeah. I mean, that's he, that was impressive. I mean, if you really look at his statistics, he I mean he was the ace. Uh, of you know that that league for a while and um, you know no one could hit him well when they got to the playoffs um, you know if he started yeah. game one four and seven people were like okay there's three wins yeah and he was a workhorse mm-hmm. very and dominant do you think he's in the hall of fame i do yankee or brewer yankee yeah i think so too yeah yeah sorry yeah, yeah. But, but there's another guy that uh, literally played baseball less than three miles from here named moose haas Franklin High School. Oh, uh, we're in Maryland, by the way. Yes, right. <laughs> yeah. um, but literally was a great player. Again, a lot of Baltimore roots and a lot of players mm-hmm. got drafted. But Moose was a guy that was their number one starter, you know, back in the 70s and 80s and everything else. Was probably their best, re- you know, starter from that, that period. And again, um, really just a great player and all that stuff. One of the greater players come out of Baltimore. I went with Teddy Higuera. Oh, um, wow. Because, again, we kind of flip flop there with perspectives yeah i found i like 20 game winners or people that truly have dominant seasons obviously the best if you can have consistent dominant seasons but i think teddy holds the record and you can check me if i'm wrong here but i don't think cc ever had a 21 season i know he had a couple 18s yeah i don't yeah. check us but i just yeah. thought that that stuck out a little bit more and he seemed to be dominant during his time so i kind of liked uh yeah learning Drafted more about this hammer. guy yeah i learned yeah. more about this guy okay now for relief and closure i went with a very current name as well as a Hall of Famer. So I went with Josh Hader as my setup guy, again, from a very local high school to us, and then Raleigh Fingers as my Ooh, closer. Look at that. I know. I know that he ended his career with uh, Milwaukee as someone like Trevor Hoffman would do or something like that, uh-huh. but Hoffman only played two years for the Brewers, and Raleigh Fingers, I want to say, played four. Grant that last year was pretty bad, uh, but he was still a Cy Young and MVP for the Brewers. Huh. I, be- I believe, check me if I'm wrong, I know he was one for the Athletics. I, I think you're you're correct. Yeah, it's yeah. just funny how the relievers, once they got a little age on them, they seem to shift teams a long way. Yeah, right. it does. Yeah. yeah. But I, I went with all left-handed bullpen. Okay. Please sack as my setup. Okay. And Hader is my closer. Not bad. Yeah. Huh. So Please sack was a great relief pitcher. He him. was a setup yeah. guy. A true setup guy. 
and he had I mean his career really came alive when he was with the Brewers then Hader just you know uh, it's amazing how he became a great pitcher mm -hmm. wasn't well regarded as a high school pitcher Orioles took a chance on him and then all of a sudden was traded and lights I mean, out yeah lights out yeah I mean yeah. You know, anytime a left-hander can throw 100, seems to do well. And he's only had four years uh, in the majors, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so <coughs> pretty impressive to be obviously on this list with still being in your 20s, still being a current player, yeah. despite the 50-year history of this team. So shout out to Josh Hader for really yeah. getting it done. They have a new guy this year that got Relief Man of the Year or something like that. Best Reliever of the Year just got named. Um, okay. The, the other but guy. he just got named yesterday. I'm sorry that I don't know. Um, he, he used to come in the eighth inning. Yeah, he's a setup man yeah. for a hater. Okay. Um, and just gave up like one earned run this entire yeah, 2020 yeah. season. I can so. visualize him. I can't think of his name either. If he can replicate that. Maybe he uh, might be our choice one day for reliever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who is managing your team? George Bamberger. Tell me about George. George was the pitching coach for the Orioles. Okay. A lot of Baltimore connections yes. here, people. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's the, huge. Yeah, you go. University yeah. of Maryland, Baltimore County. That's yeah. right. Cinderella. But anyway, um, Bamberger, his nickname was Bambi. And what he did was he was pitching coach when the Orioles had great stars, the Palmers, the Cuellars, McNally's, and all that stuff. And then again, when Brewers were in the American League, they stole George from the Orioles, became the manager, and really was the guiding light when they were really, really good um, with you know the, the Cecil Coopers and Gorman Thomas and all those guys. So I think his record with the Brewers was outstanding. And again, very steady with the whole squad, really developed pitching, and was a very, uh, I think, the best manager they ever had. I was a great counsel. Uh, the yeah. current manager, um, honestly, because obviously he used to play for the Brewers, yeah. uh, but I think he's pretty good. I don't, again, I just don't recall a lot of great Brewers managers during my time, uh, and I think, obviously, Craig Council is someone that could manage his team to a World Series one day. Yeah, he, uh, he needs more players and all yeah. that stuff. They had this point year this year. They did, especially with the talent that's on that team, the All-Stars, the yeah. people that I, we've named on our list. Yeah. Um, yeah, especially like, in that division. Yeah, Hader and Yelich are both on our list. and Yeah, Braun. Yeah, Braun. Yeah, Braun. Was both my yeah. list or just mine? I had him as a... Oh, okay, gotcha. Had him in number um, two there. So, yeah, and very interesting what's going to happen with Braun uh, next year if the National League doesn't keep the Universal DH because uh, he's aging. I don't know if he's you know, going to be... Good enough defensively to play in the outfield for Milwaukee. I think they're really banking on the DH yeah. happening so Milwaukee can keep Braun. So it'll be fun to watch yeah. in the offseason. He's had a great career, though. Yeah. Again, Hebrew Hammer. Love that guy. Yeah. Uh, then we end it by talking about your best logo history. Uh, definitely a lot of fun from the barrel man to the glove and all that stuff. Dad, what is I, your favorite? I like this 78 version. Me too. Uh, I've read some history of that. And I think it's creative. Yeah. So I think it does well. There you go. The ball and glove from 78 to 94, it's mine too. I almost chose a, um, a Seattle Pilots logo just to mess with you all. Um, <laughs> but no, I think that one's really fun too. Obviously, I like the uh, little barley leaf because obviously brewers and beer. Uh, so if I could add the barley leaf to the glove somehow, I would. Uh, but yeah. Very nice. They got great bobbleheads as well with the sausages. <laughs> yeah, so. it's the, the racing sausages are quite fun. We're yeah. more familiar with the racing presence of DC, but yes, yeah. quite fun. Yeah, but again, the uh, the pilots when they were in Seattle did not draw well. No, but the Mariners come in, they drew exceedingly well. Yeah. So all yeah. depends, I think, on talent, Perfect. talent, talent. <laughs> yeah, but it, it just shows that a franchise yeah. leaves a city, they get another chance, and it seems like they, they support it very well because yeah. they know what the franchise means. You to move the, the franchise from Montreal to DC. DC yeah. loves it now. Oh, yeah. 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 Nationals are a great fan base. Yeah. Well, thank you for watching Brewers fan base, the Brewer crew that watched us. We appreciate it. Uh, again, leave us a comment below, and if you disagree, thought we left off a big snub, whatever it might be. Uh, but, yeah, thank you for watching. Take care.